Hi, I'm James. In this video, I'm going to show you a really amazing technique that mimics light leaks. And the result is really quite realistic. And, you know, distinguishing between a real light leak and one of these is sometimes quite difficult depending on how you put them together. So let's get started. And it doesn't take that long. It's really nice and simple. So the first thing that we need to do is just hit D on the keyboard just to make sure that the default black and white colors are in the palette there on the left. If black is in the foreground, that's fine. If it's in the background, just hit X on the keyboard and then that's gonna bring that into the front there. Okay, so first up, go to the adjustment layer icon, which is a half white, half black circle at the bottom of the layers panel and choose gradient from the list of options. By default, it's gonna be set to linear, which is fine, that's what we want. Align with layer, that's good as well. I'm just gonna hit dither as well, and what that does is just helps to stop any banding that you may get. It really doesn't hurt to click that on. And then go up to gradient and just double click on there, and I've just gone a step too far there, so I'll hit Apple Z. And now what we're gonna do is just drag this black point over here Let's take it to about 70% and we'll take that one there as well. Take that up to 70 and I'm just going to left mouse click on the top here. Let's, let's go for quite a chunky one. So let's go for about 55 and we'll do the same just there on the bottom. Then what I'm going to do is just take that white point on the right hand side and drag it over to the left. And now I'm just going to left mouse click up on the top bar there and you'll see that's created a new white point. And what we're gonna do is bring this in really quite close. And in a moment, you will see why. Okay, how are we doing? So that's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay there, which is gonna take us back to that first dialog box. And I'm just gonna change the angle. So there you'll see we have a slightly harder edge and then it graduates off to the left. So it, it's a bit less uniform than just having exactly the same graduation on either side. And what I'm gonna do now is just change the angle slightly. So I'm just gonna knock it up. I want it to come in at a slight angle. So let's go for that there. And what you can do here is change the size of it if you want to, so you can kind of blow it up there or make it thinner. So let's just type in 85. I think with this, the best thing to do is always just to experiment and find the kind of size that works for you. And that's part of the fun of it, that you can just constantly approach it in different ways. Okay, so now the move tool there is already activated when I hover over the gradient we just created. So let's just bring that down to the bottom there. Actually, let's have it running between these two guys here. Once you're done there, hit OK. And now just go to the Blending Modes drop-down menu and change it from Normal to Screen. What that's gonna do is make it completely invisible. So just make a mental note of where that gradient was. And we're gonna apply another one to actually make it all show up. So just go over to the color palette on the left-hand side, double-click on there, and we're gonna choose kind of nice a kind of warm orange color. So let's go for something really bright. There we go. And you can choose any color. Uh, reds, oranges, yellows work really well, but also sometimes blues and kind of purples look quite good. Okay, so hit okay. So that's now our foreground color over there. Go back down to the adjustment layer icon and select gradient again. So this time we are gonna keep the gradient as it is here just to a normal old linear and let's just change the angle slightly and let's just see what happens if I sp let's spread that out we'll just take make it a tiny bit bigger than a hundred percent let's just hit dither again just to make sure we don't get any banding probably wouldn't but like I say it really doesn't hurt and then hit OK so this is where the magic happens so hold down the alt key on the keyboard and hover between your two layers there and then left mouse click and that will clip the top gradient to the one below that we made invisible so there you'll see we've got what is essentially a, a light leak 
and you can make that second gradient really short so you just get a really short kind of stumpy light leak and it all completely depends basically how it looks on that first gradient so there's one more thing that we're going to do just to kind of enhance the overall effect because it's quite a contrasty image if you had a light leak you would actually get a kind of haziness and a loss of contrast so let's go down to the adjustment layer icon choose levels and then go to the black output slider on the bottom there and we're just going to drag that over to the right just to kind of mimic that haziness so let's have a quick look there so this really does come down to personal taste but i'm going to go for a level of 21 and as i say this is a really simple technique where all the fun is in just experimenting and seeing what you can do. So that is how to apply a light leak effect in Photoshop.